This episode is presented by Ruvi, the most real indoor cycling experience that delivers the famous cycling routes to your home. Go to Ruvi.com and start your free 14-day trial. Mark Cavendish will be back at the Tour de France. At least he has a team to do so. And you wouldn't have probably guessed the team that he's lining up for, uh, could be signing for, and has, has, has actually already signed for, if we're believing the reports out of Italy. And usually they're correct. And according to them, he's in Calpe, Spain right now, getting sized up for a bike and for team gear. And that gear is blue and is the Team Astana colors. And that bike is a Willier Italian bike uh, for Mark Cavendish. Now, of course, Mark Cavendish is cycling's greatest ever sprinter, period. I think uh, no one's going to argue that. 34 stage wins alone in the Tour de France from from 2008 all the way up to 2021. Uh, and that ties the record of Eddie Merckx. And his dream is to get back to the Tour de France and win one more, simply one more, to put him at 35. It would make him the record holder, and probably no one would ever touch that. According to the article, and we see the article from the Pink newspaper, their website's also pink as well. We didn't translate it into uh, English. Uh, we just love the, the Italian words on there. You see Martinelli, you see Spagna. You see Olandese, Case Bowl. It sounds like Case Bowl might be coming over to help support Mark Cavendish in the sprints. Uh, the, the team manager, Alexander Vinukarov, who himself was a racer, he retired after winning the London Olympics. He said, yeah, Mark's 37, uh, but you know, age doesn't matter as long as he's motivated. I won the Olympics when I was 40. You remember that Rigoberto Oran turned the wrong way famously in the sprint there where they're coming down the mall and Vinukarov went out for this the sprint, but uh, I digress. Uh, space for Cavendish. Well, there was space when uh, the team ejected Superman Angel Lopez uh, after being in, involved in some sort of doping situation uh, there in Spain and uh, some doping investigation, I should say. Uh, so, and this comes off the hills of one of Team Astana's worst ever season. I, I think they've only won six races this season. Um, for those keeping count, Cav has been linked to several teams, and I've got some notes here because I don't want to forget any of them. Israel, uh, Israel Premier Tech, Bahrain, Victorious, Team Ineos, going back to his old team. Of course, the big one is B&B Hotels with Jerome Pino. Hell, even human-powered health. Yes, the U.S. team, U.S. professional continental team, a great team, but uh, with its program, and it has a very slim chance of making it to the Tour de France, and that is... Mark Cavendish's ultimate goal. Pim, this is a lot of build up, a lot of foreplay to the question, <laughs> but how much of a surprise is this for you that Mark Cavendish is racing for Team Astana, Alexander Vernukarov's team? Well, I think it's all about whether or not there's a spot on a world tour team and there weren't that many left, uh, if at all. So I think that he had to make a choice. What races do I want to do? Uh, and as we see all those replays of the sprints, you don't see any Astana riders in there. So they're, they're hopefully going to get uh, the ability to show their team at the front. Um, the other thing that I see in those replays is that uh, Cavendish is always surrounded by someone like Julian Alaphilippe. You know, he's being led out there by Morkov. Um, he won't have that at Astana. You know, it's going to be a time for one of those riders to step up to be able to serve a rider like this. And this is like a career defining opportunity for some of those young riders. So if I'm on Astana, I'm excited to have that chance. Uh, if I'm Cavendish, I'm looking at this as really my last shot at trying to get that big win. Um, you know, I will say though, I wish Human Powered Health got Cavendish. That would have been a great move. Um, he would have yeah. been able to build a legacy with the team on its way up. You know, they've got a lot of great support. Um, you know, from their sponsors. And I, I look forward to seeing them get these invites that they need. Um, so that's a disappointment to not see that. And you know what? Estan is like, you know, got to say, it's, it's in the back of the fridge. You don't know if it's any good anymore. Maybe past its expiration date, uh, maybe smells a little bit. I don't know. But, uh, you know, Cavendish will bring it some freshness and we'll be able to get it to the front of the line and hopefully we'll get some wins out of it. Well, we'll keep refrigerators and cycling out of the topic of discussion. Um, <laughs> for those who are new to the sport, uh, let's just have a rundown of Mark Cavendish because when I talk about the 2020, 2008, 2008, way back to 2008, when he first won the Tour de France, he was racing for Team High Road. 
when he started pro, he was racing for Team Mobile, and Bob Stapleton just uh, started management of the team, and that team became High Road. It was Team Columbia. It was HTC. And then he signed for uh, Team Ineos, which back in the day was Team Sky. He was in his world championship rainbow jersey then. He went to Quick Step. Uh, excuse me, went to Team Quick Step, the super powerful team managed by uh, Patrick Lefebvre. And then uh, Dean Dimension Data, racing for Africa, Team Bahrain Victorious with his old coach and trainer, Rob Ellingworth, who was then at the helm. And then back to Team Quick Step, where he had this resurgence because people thought his career was over. But then he went back to Team Quick Step and he went back to that specialized bike, Tim. You mentioned the bike. And I know Mark's not really going to like these Willie Air bikes. And so I'm kind of going to be interested to see how he goes on those bikes. He's such a fan of specialized. Um, but he didn't get to go to the Tour de France this year because uh, Lefebvre does what he wants. And he has Fabio Jakobsen. He took Fabio Jakobsen. Uh, but now, uh, yeah, you know, he's now with uh, Team Astana, or he could be with Team Astana for 2023. It's a strange connection, but it shows that Mark really wants to ride the Tour of any cost, which is what you were saying. Um, what do you think the motivation is for him now, Tim? Uh, because he's got 34 stage wins in the Tour. Many said he should have just retired at the end of the 2021 season when he, when he got those wins at the Tour. Well, I think you're always trying to test yourself when you're a champion like like Cavendish. You you always want to know that you're a champion. And seeing him come back, those wins uh, two years ago really came easily. You know, from from us watching from afar, it was like wow. You know, he has got the gears he needs. He's going as fast as he needs to go. He's got the positioning that a rider would dream of. Um, I think it's going to be really hard to recreate that one more time. But, you know, kudos for him for trying and, and giving it a shot. I think he's going to have some wins. Um, but again, it really comes down to what that team is able to do. Can it support him? Can it put him in the right places? Um, I'm not worried about Cavendish on his own. I'm, I'm worried about the team to support him. Yeah, we're going to have Joe Dombrowski doing some lead outs. Um, I guess they were suggesting maybe Luis Leon Sanchez could kind of slot into to that role. Case Bowl, I, I think... If they brought him in, I think what that does is it puts the team at its maximum for uh, riders that they can have on the roster. So they're pretty limited in bringing in new riders. There's a lot of b, &B riders that are out on the market. Some of them are getting snatched up right now because that team has basically folded and doesn't look like it's happening at all in 2023. That was the team that was going to sign Mark Cavendish. Tim, regardless, of, we're in for a great one if it, if it happens. Uh, regardless of the questions around what team Mark Cavendish is riding for, it's going to be a celebration time to even have Mark Cavendish back at the Tour de France and that possibility to get him to 35 wins. And even if it does, even if he doesn't get there, we get him to, we get to see him sprint against Fabio Jakobsen, against Walt Van Aert, against uh, Caleb Ewan. It's just, it's just pretty cool to have that great sprinter there at the Tour de France one more time. We're going to have that racing uh, on in the summertime, but uh, for those of you uh, who are ready for cross and we're all ready for cross, we're thick into it. Tune in this Monday, the day after Christmas. We got cyclocross racing back in its heartland in Belgium. 